This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Hit me. Elvis. Thank you very much. Directed by Baz Luhrmann, tells the story of Elvis Presley through the lens of manager Colonel Tom Parker. Behind only Bohemian Rhapsody, it is the second highest grossing musical biopic of all time. It's What's up for, first? It's up for eight Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Actor, Austin Butler, Best Sound, Best Production Design, Best Cinematography, Best Makeup and Hairstyling, Best Costume Design, Best Film Editing. It's a 77 on Rotten Tomatoes. Runs two hours and 39 minutes. This is one, Pete, where it's not the greatest movie. But there's elements of it that make it a not surprising Best Picture nominee. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it, and it's not like a, an anger-inducing Best Picture nominee where I, I think that we can all agree. We just discussed Bohemian Rhapsody. We can all agree, or at least we can agree. A lot of people liked that movie for some reason. We can agree that movie stunk and should not have been nominated for Best Picture. This one, I think it's it's the weakest of the bunch. But I'm not mad that it's included. So if there was one point I was hoping we would stress, and you you just did it for me out the gate, it's that this is not Bohemian Rhapsody, and this is not Rami Malek in Bohemian Rhapsody. Austin Butler is, as I said, up for Best Actor, and he's really in a three-man race with Brendan Fraser, who is the favorite, and Colin Farrell. He's right there with Colin Farrell as far as betting odds go. I'll throw those up on the screen right now. But Frazier is minus 150. Farrell is plus 250. And Austin Butler is plus 300. And then from there, Bill Nye and Paul Meskel are very, very long shots. I would think that it'll be one of these three. I don't think that Austin Butler is necessarily going to win Best Actor for this. But this is a movie with Tar being the other that succeeds because of one performance yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin Butler I think is good and you you have to remember as you compare this to another not great movie which is Bohemian Rhapsody that <laughs> this is a better movie than Bohemian Rhapsody like this isn't a terrible movie and Austin Butler definitely isn't terrible in it I think no. that Austin Butler is actually quite good in it. he's quite good I would agree with that uh, the the tar comparison works but it it, it doesn't in another way because Tar is carried by the performance of Kate Blanchett, and everybody else around Kate Blanchett is good enough. Mm -hmm. This movie, Austin Butler, it's definitely carried by Austin Butler and his performance, but the people around Austin Butler are not nearly good enough. Tom Hanks is distractingly terrible in this movie. Distractingly terrible. This movie is called Elvis. Could very much be called Elvis and Colonel Tom Parker, because... Mm -hmm. As I said, it's told through the lens of Colonel Tom Parker, but this movie, for all intents and purposes, is about the relationship between Elvis and his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Tom Hanks plays Colonel Parker, and... It follows the playbook of uh, of Straight Outta Compton, where mm -hmm. it's a movie about NWA, but told through the lens of Easy es relationship mm -hmm. with, uh, I forget his name, but Paul, played by Paul Giamatti. Jerry, uh... Jerry Heller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, Tom Hanks plays Colonel Parker, and the role is bad and weird. The performance is bad and weird. Distracting was the word you said. It was one of two words I had for his performance. Even the, the makeup other one, was bad and weird. Yeah. The other word, though, for Tom Hanks in this movie is just bad. And I don't <laughs> know if this was a Baz Luhrmann decision, if this was a Tom Hanks decision, but they make Colonel Parker so cartoony in this movie that voice that Tom it's Hanks so puts tough. on, that's not... Look up Colonel Tom Parker interviews. He didn't have that voice or that accent. Really? For He sounded mostly like an American dude. The fans made it possible. You could promote all you want to, but if the people don't want to buy a ticket, it doesn't help. Oh, my God. And Cause, they... Because they, that's the most distracting part, is that the accent is so cartoony. Really, really weird voice, which if you see it and you've not heard Colonel Tom Parker before, you say, okay, well, I'm not going to hold it against him that he right. sounds kind of funny. Right. But but no, that's that's not what Colonel Tom Parker sounded like. That's something that I know he was a Dutch guy, but uh, Tom Hanks seemingly just kind of added this thing and really made the character his own. 
normally you're cool with Tom Hanks making a character his own, but that character was so bad, that performance was so bad, and it's not all Tom Hanks' fault because a lot of that could have been direction, but it's worth something for Austin Butler to be able to say he blew Tom Hanks yeah. off the screen. <laughs> that is very. There's a lot of irony there that, like, you take you you say hey, we're going to take Austin Butler, who's barely ever acted before, and we're going to put him next to Tom Hanks, a guy. It's like kind of like a veteran quarterback with like a rookie quarterback. It's like, oh, he'll show him the ropes. It's Austin Butler just fucking dominated Tom Hanks in this movie. Tom Hanks looked terrible through and through and like that character i think is the weakest point of the movie yeah uh, unfortunately it's an extremely important part of the movie <laughs> yes i don't think again i don't think this is a terrible movie i i, I in re-watching it i was like this is fine i felt yeah. the same way that i felt when i was watching it in, in theaters didn't need all of it and again with the, the colonel parker thing there are elements of it that are terrible but just the sh like the shots of elvis on stage and the way that austin butler carried himself as elvis i thought were really good and if the comparison you have to make is bohemian rhapsody in terms of it being a musical biopic and a very successful oscar nominated musical biopic this felt like more of a movie than bohemian rhapsody which truly felt like a train wreck i definitely liked this movie more on the second watch um i just recently rewatched it and, and i was a little disappointed I, I was a little bit um confused by a lot of the things that were going on on the first watch um you know I, the 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 tom hanks thing number one uh, of course but like the runtime was way too long and that was frustrating on the first watch it it still I still think that it's it runs too long and I understand that they cover a ton of ground but I don't think that they needed to do I don't think they needed to hit everything that they went into it felt like a Wikipedia kind of deal yeah and there are parts of it that were done faithfully and there were parts of it that were not done faithfully I think that the one of the more interesting storylines that I'm like man if they could have just condensed a bunch of this and steered it more in this direction is that Elvis was doing black music. And this movie was clearly okay with acknowledging that and not yeah, making yeah, it yeah. some, not doing any sort of whitewashing. And I think they do a good job of, of, of saying that part of it too, where it's it, it wasn't, Elvis didn't steal black music because he was like, ooh, that's good, I'm taking that. It was, it, it, well, like he kind of did that, but, no, 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 but no, in, but in a way that was like, I like what what is happening here, and I it may, I'm passionate about it, and I want to do that kind of music. One thing that was not done faithfully and was really distracting to me is the music. They incorporate a lot of hip hop in this, and well, a that's lot a of stuff. Baz that, thing. Yes, exactly. A lot of stuff that uh, was not of of the times. It's like 1956, and yeah. there's like trap beats going on. Well, he did that with uh, with uh, the Great Gatsby, mm -hmm. and that was extremely distracting to hear like Kanye in the, in the Great Gatsby. But uh, that's a Baz Luhrmann thing. I I, I try not to um, have like to 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 nitpick stylistically. You know, like, because I don't want every every director to follow the same blueprint. Like, I like having directors who have their own styles that they bring to a certain story. So, like, there was a lot going on um, in throughout the course of this movie with like editing choices and musical choices, and I try to be okay with that stuff, especially when it's a Baz Luhrmann thing. So, but that's cool if you aren't taking so many other of the uh, like aesthetic elements seriously and giving them faithful depictions. Like everything else, if there's a scene that's set in the 50s or a scene that's set in the 60s, looks and feels like the 50s or 60s. And then it having, like the, the Viva it'll... Las Vegas yeah. toxic mashup thing, <laughs> I was wanted to jump out the window. It's also, I think, a little bit more um of a of a iffy area when you're doing a musical biopic yeah you know like you can do the great gatsby that isn't really directly tied with music and you can make weird musical choices it becomes a little bit more uh prevalent when it's a musical biopic okay this is an interesting combo uh as betting odds go for best picture elvis is fifth at plus 2000 which makes it quite a long shot but it is the third lowest Rotten Tomatoes score of the Best Picture nominees. It, I mean, there's a huge jump off. You get the the 
Top Gun Maverick is 96, goes all the way through uh, All Quiet on the Western Front at 91%, and then it drops down to Elvis at 77%, Avatar The Way of Water, 76%, Triangle of Sadness, 72%. So I kind of understand why this would be more of a betting favorite, despite it not being any sort of critic's darling, just because it's a big grand thing it was a huge success at the box office so i get that but i always love the combination of beloved as far as like betting odds and people think that the movie stinks yeah i don't think that people think the movie stinks um i i i don't know like i i think I, that, I, a lot of people say the movie stinks i don't th- <laughs> well i don't think the movie. i stinks. disagree yeah yeah i think the movie is uh fine uh, I think maybe like a little bit better than fine. It's an above average movie. It it has its warts. It has its like r- really strong warts that take it out of the running to even be like considered. If it wins best picture, I will be mad. Yeah, th- that's where I would put it. I, mean, I wasn't super mad that it got nominated. There were movies that for sure deserved it more, but that happens every year like if, if Elvis getting nominated was the worst crime then uh the Oscars had a a mostly harmless year it's not going to win i would be extremely extremely surprised if it won uh all right that is elvis